What I'd like to have a look at here is a way in which we can blend two tubes together using our surface loft command. Now the first thing I need to do is actually create an area where I can cut away this particular join. So I have a sketch here which is just a simple ellipse and I'm going to use this to actually trim away our surfaces. So using our surface tools we're going to go with the uh, trim and the trim tool is the actual sketch and I'd like to remove these sections that are actually inside our particular sketch as you can see on there as such. Okay so that's now left us with an area that we can actually uh, loft between. So if we go to our surface loft or lofted surface we're going to actually click on the profiles themselves which is the actual uh, edge so I'm just going to click on a, an edge here and a corresponding edge approximately there. Now we get a direct loft between the two. Now because there's no start and end point we have our connection points and we really need to sort of adjust this accordingly so you know it really is a visual thing here so we're just really looking approximately about here to get something like what we want. Now once we've actually created our loft obviously if we accept that now we're going to get this sharp deviation between the loft and the actual tubes themselves. So we have the ability to go to our start and end constraints and on my start constraint I'm going to choose an option curvature to face and you'll see that this gives me uh, a nice curve or it comes away from the profile basically the same curvature as the tube. Apply the same to the uh, end constraint and again we get a nice curvature based on these arrows that you can see that have a nominal value of 1. Now we can increase or decrease okay, these accordingly okay make it sharper or blend it a bit more in uh, the default value is actually one so we're going to stick with that particular value for both of them now the problem that we do have here is because of the actual angle between the two tubes our curvature on this bottom face here should really be different from the one on the top now I'll accept this and you'll see it does a good job of it but we may want to adjust these differently in order to give us a slightly better blend but we'll just accept that and overall you can see it does a really good job of that you know ni nicely blends those two tubes together. So as I said before if we want to make this slightly different the actual curvature up between the top and the bottom we have to make some changes so I'm just going to use my rollback bar and we're just going to go back and we're going to use our second sketch which is exactly uh, the same as our first sketch and we're going to edit this particular sketch and I'm going to use the split entities command to actually generate some points that we can loft between so if I go to my tools and sketch tools and split entities I'm going to add a point approximately about there another one here and again repeat the process down on the bottom about there and there and what we've done in effect is we've create we've created segments of our ellipse so if I just highlight them you can see that we've got four segments now of our ellipse now using the same sketch we're now going to go to our surfaces and we're going to trim the surface just the same as we did before and we're going to remove these two internal sections now because we actually add this added the split entities command we no longer have one complete edge and you can see there if I click on the edge you see how it ends at that point and the same here as well it ends at that point there so when we do an actual surface loft we can click on these two edges and you can see it's only lofting that particular area there now we'll do the same as before okay very similar we'll actually add our start and end constraints so we'll do a uh, curvature to face on both of them okay and you can see that there and we might want to actually just increase that so I'm going to make that 1.5 just to add a slightly different curvature on and we'll make that one 1.25 okay maybe we'll change them both to be 1.25 make it a little bit easier okay and I'm going to accept that and you can see that's added that surface between uh, that top edge or those two top edges. Now we're going to repeat the process again. So we're going to go lofted surface. 
We'll click on our bottom edge now. Okay, there and there. And again, we'll do exactly the same with the start and end constraints. And this time we'll stick with the value of one because it's a sharper angle and we'll accept that. Okay, so that's given us slightly different curvature between the top and the bottom, whereas the first example, we didn't have that option. It just applied one uh, value to the whole loft. Now, what do we do about the actual uh, side pieces? Well, what we can do is do a surface fill. So we're going to go with our fill surface, and all we need to do is click on the edges that give us our boundary. So I'm going to click on these four edges. And again, I'm going to apply curvature to all these four edges. Now at the moment, the default option is contact. So what will happen is it will create a mesh. And basically, it will just uh, fill that surface uh, between those four edges as if we would put up a piece of you know, uh, cling film over it. But we're going to change this, apply it to all edges, and just make it curvature throughout. So it will give us a really nice blend. It gives us our mesh, which means it's okay to go. And we'll accept that. And there we have our loft. Okay, with a little bit more control than we had previously. Obviously, we'd have to do the other side. And then we could knit all these together and then create a solid of them.